I mean, ultimately, what anxiety is, is a feeling of overactivation in our nervous system, which is unnecessary for the current circumstance. So there are certain places that being having an activated system is appropriate. And I think many people will be familiar with the work, particularly around trauma and around going into a fight, flight or freeze response. So we're not talking about here being in a situation where there's physical danger or genuine psychological danger where having an activated state is helpful. What we're speaking to is where we have that activation in our system and it's unnecessary to the circumstance that we're in. And as I think we'll talk about a bit later, like, yeah, we need to be strong. We need to be like um, dealing with all the adversities of life kind of thing. And yeah, it's it's like, it seems to be a good thing to be resilient. It's both of them. Yeah. One distinction that I usually make around strength is that it's not the same thing to talk about strength and hardened. Because particularly in women, I see a big difference between oh yeah, she was a very strong woman, my grandmother, my mother, or even yourself, right? When what we're actually seeing is not necessarily someone who's strong in a sense that I build robustness, that capacity to be with what is and flow either in, in an active or a non-active way, rather that it's a hardening where I stop feeling. And I start disconnecting both from myself and the outside. And since I don't feel I'm strong and I can pull through, that is not resilience. That is disconnection. That's numbness. The trauma based. It really has to do with all forms of trauma, childhood trauma, adult trauma, historical trauma, collective trauma, uh, trauma related to, you know, uh, unfortunately, sadly, various kinds of injustice and, and injustice and oppression and so forth. But, you know, just the trauma of life. Uh, which, which you know, uh, we, we want to be clear, human beings can deal with trauma and it can be, we can leverage trauma for post-traumatic growth as part of human evolution. But nonetheless, if we don't have a safe place to do our healing work in, trauma can be incredibly debilitating. And we now understand that all these illnesses are, uh, and these mental challenges are really trauma-based. So the good news about psychedelic, assist, psychedelic experiences altogether properly held and psychedelic assisted therapy properly held is, uh, and it, this is pretty complex, but I'm gonna simplify it into, into kind of two things it does. One, it, it lowers the barriers to accessing uh, previous experiences. It, it kind of relaxes our defense systems and allows us to re-experience or surface uh, traumatic experiences that we've repressed and naturally repressed them. It's a natural defense system. And, and so we want to really be hold this in a safe way. If people are going to, you know, release things that they've, you know, they've repressed because they're very hard to deal with, they, they need to be resurfaced in a, in a safe way, in a therapeutic way. And it appears that these substances like ketamine assisted therapy and MDMA assisted psilocybin assisted therapy do really help people uh, re-experience these things, but in a different way. Yeah, so there's this idea of resilience of kind of like, hey, it's me, little me versus the world. Little isolated individual cut off me. And that's a scary proposition but before you add yeah. problems of the, even the world in. And Absolutely. you can, so, you know, strengthen the self and strengthen the individual and, you know, make them feel better and all sorts of things. But more radical than that is giving this oceanic experience of oneness with everything where there isn't that sense of threat, where there isn't that kind of isolation, which is the, which is really at the core for a lack of resilience. 